One more minute. <laughs> I can just start it. All right, test him. Is the microphone working now? I guess not. Test, test, test. It's not on. Do I have to turn it on? No. Yeah. All right. Oh, okay, it's on now. Good morning. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's really nice to be back here. I haven't been talking at uh, the HMO5 DevCon for a while, like at least for like past few years or so. So it's really nice to be back. And especially when venue is so nice, you know, I like the conference room with the fresh air. I hate to be, you know, be in a stuffy room having like, headaches and stuff. I really, it's nice to be here. So uh, my name is Tomomi, Tomomi Mura, and I'm working at PubNub. We had a booth over here. And today I'm going to talk about hardware hacking for JavaScript engineers. But first, let's watch the cat video. It's my cat. Sorry, Katie. So it's a tiny little drone. It's actually operated with JavaScript. I mean, the Node.js actually running from a machine. So I can just manipulate this drone. It's supposed to be able to manipulate it in my JavaScript code, but it was just flipping around. That was unintentional, actually. So yeah, you can do a lot of things with JavaScript. Hold on a second. I hear some weird echo here. Can you guys hear me all right? All right, cool. And this is me, my photo. It's actually my photo created with emoji. So <laughs> I don't know if you can really see it, but it's my hair is consists of donuts. It's all emoji. Anyway, um, I'm a front end engineer actually, so I don't really have a formal um, background, uh, much experience with uh, actual hardware stuff like electric engineering. I do JavaScript front end, and I'm a developer evangelist at PubNub. So before I joined PubNub. Actually, I was working at mobile industry for a while, a long time actually. And uh, yeah, I was doing mobile web even before iPhone era. I think I've been doing this mobile web since like 2005. You know, that time is as we call it web. And my last work at Nokia, I was actually working with W3C as well. So, you know, I was actually trying to provide some awesome use cases what we can do with uh, open web, like web standard with mobile phones. But then, like again, I say I used to be working at Nokia, and before that I was at Palm and HP. You know, I was always working at some failing companies, I mean, mobile space-wise. So those phones are all gone. Now, you know, if you're not working for Android or iOS, you're like out of job. So I'm like, you know what, let's just move on and do something new and cool. And I'm always good at landing something completely new, like before it's getting really popular. So I got into an IoT field. Well, IoT is not the only things I do, but the part of the things that PubNub does. So I was like, yeah, it's cool. But then initially, I didn't really like this acronym, IoT. It sounds really sketchy, you know, Internet of Things. What the hell is Things, you know? So I wasn't really sure. But then, you know, the Cisco uh, observed the number of things connected in the Internet actually surpassed the number of people on Earth in, during uh, 2008. Well, it doesn't mean, you know, like some alien from extraterrestrials being hacking our system and stuff. It's, that means, uh, you know, more things connected on the internet, including like bots, crawlers, or like all other things. And uh, they, uh, Cisco also estimate that uh, 50 billion devices and objects will be connected to the internet by 2020. That's a lot of connections. So the things. An object, what I'm talking about here, is uh, like light bulbs, it could be nest, uh, weddings, like smart body analyzer. Actually, I own one. It's pretty good. And I, <laughs> you know, that's how the things work in a startup. You get a free food. So I gained like eight pounds since I joined. So I bought this weddings to lose my weight. And uh, well, I successfully get back to my original weight. So that works. <laughs> and a central sensing cooker is, um, it's a grill connected to the internet. It's like, you know, George Foreman grill and with steroid, well, maybe even with more steroid, I would say. And Amazon Dash. 
internet connected button. You can click, 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 all the more ties, like what, diapers and stuff. And we saw it's connected pet color. This is actually, you know, it's like a Fitbit for dogs. So the basically everything's connected to the internet these days. Thumb, thumbsets gets internet, bulbs get internet, and everything gets internet these days. So right. So but you know what? This is HTML5 DevConf. Most of us are software side, web developers. It doesn't really sound like anything, you know, it's relevant to us. Actually it's not. I mean it's wrong. It is relevant to us. Because many times when you're connected to the things connected to the internet, how do you operate them? Maybe you're using mobile phones or you're using you know the web browsers. So then all the things is really relevant to you. And if you want to prototype all those things, you know, it would be really cool that you can prototype the hardware side too. So uh, how where can we get started? So I'm gonna talk about a little bit about some basic stuff. If you already know the electronics and like hardware stuff, it might be a little boring, but bear with me. So Adreno. Adreno is probably the most popular uh, microcontroller here, and uh, you know it's the reason is it's really uh, great. It's unlike most previous programmable circuits. Uh, circuit boards, the Adreno doesn't require any separate piece of hardware to load your, you know, um, program into you know, in a board. So you can basically just plug and play. So I uh, like actually when I see an MCU, it means it's microcontroller. I mean, and again, it's an open source. It's open source hardware, and the software side is open source as well. So it comes with IDE. You can just download it for free. And it's really like developer friendly board. So that's probably the very first developer friendly board. So that's what I get popularity is really. So they have some weird uh, dispute. I mean the founder, so the Arduino was founded I think in, in Italy. And now the founders has some problems. It has some legal dispute. So we still call it Arduino in the United States. But now it is actually called Genuino in the outside of the country, but I still keep calling Adreno as long as I'm in here. Well, maybe because I'm just used to it. So anyways, it's Adreno. So the one on the top is Uno. I actually have it here too. It's Uno. It's probably recommended for as a first Adreno. It comes with 14 digital input output with uh, six analog pins and USB connections and a power jack there. And there are some other variants like Mega. Mega is uh, Uno's big brother with more pins. I say brother, could be sister, why I put the genders on. Anyways, uh, has more IO pins. And the Yun, uh, that comes with two chips and uh, one actually enabled Wi Fi. So when you use using other boards, you have to have a Wi Fi shield together, but when you have a Yun, it actually comes with Wi Fi so you don't have to have an extra. And uh, uh, there's something called Zero that uh, announced, not announced, I mean, the release recently. That's supposed to be a more powerful, like, faster chip. But I guess it wasn't quite popular. So they just announced uh, something new last week that's called a 101. And I think it will be available in early next year. And the notable one is a lily pad. That's one in the bottom, the picture on the bottom. It's really cute ones. That's a wearable, a wearable form of Adreno. And uh, designed with connecting pad, and uh, you're supposed to be sewn into with uh, a conductive thread. So I kind of wanted to bring it here with me, but I didn't. So yeah, that's just the illustration of Adreno. So it has a pins and plug. It. It's really easy, just plug and play. A little bit. That's a really notable one because uh, it's really great for beginners and it actually really educational piece for, for kids. You know, they look like Legos. It's really like a Lego. It has a magnet on the side so you can just snap those parts together without wiring or anything. And it, it doesn't go wrong because it's a magnet, you know, doesn't snap each other if you're doing it wrong, right? So it's really easy. And uh, it's not just a cute, it's the color coded. So a pink. It's input, I think. Yes, it's inputs, buttons, and a switch and stuff. And the uh, green ones are output, which means like LED and things, just outputs that are. And green is, oh, the blue is power, and the orange is a wire. 
So little bits actually works without programming skills whatsoever. You can just like again snap and play. You can turn the lights on and enable the button and things really easily. But if you want to program it, you can use Adreno. So there's a thing called Adreno at heart, and that's a actually illustration in the middle, the orange one. So you can just plug it into the computer and you can program it. Yeah, I've done, yeah, I've played with that before too. It's really fun. And when you don't want to, you don't feel comfortable with wiring and breadboard, maybe the little bit is really the first thing you want to try. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and this is open source too. So there are over 60 different modules, which actually makes more than 150,000 possible circuit combinations. That's neat. So there are uh, many communities around Adreno. And there are so many Adreno compatible microcontrollers out there. And uh, yeah, there's a little cute ones over there I find on uh, like uh, Kickstarters. I shouldn't be really looking at Kickstarters in Indiegogo all the time because I keep throwing my money around. Because every time I look, there's something that's so interesting out there. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's really nice to see the community is growing. So it's not, it's different, it's not Adreno. And it's really cool because a Tesla treats JavaScript as the first the class system. So for Adrenos, actually um, they use some language called Sketch, which is a C, C++ based. So you kind of have to understand. I and mean, I was like, you know what, I don't, I don't get it. I'm, I'm a JavaScript developer, I don't understand. It's, so for a while, I didn't even bother playing around with it. So I tried a Tesla the first time, actually. Oh, that, maybe not the first time, but I tried a Tesla sometimes, like last year. So it was so easy to use. So a Tesla contains a built-in Wi-Fi chip, too. So you don't have to buy extra shield. And so, so you can just, you know, call in JavaScript, connect some, you know, write some program, connect the internet really easy. And uh, they had a plug and play modules. You can see in a photo. So they have a wires, like a pin, not wires, a pins. It's not like a magnet, like a uh, little bit. But you can just really just plug and play. So that comes, no, not comes, but they sell uh, separate, like maybe 10 types of zone modules, uh, including accelerometer, ambient light, and servo. The RFID and GPS and maybe some other modules like a camera and audio. It's so easy, just plug. And each module comes with um, um, open source library on NPM. So when you call in Tesla, basically all you have to do is NPM install Tesla. And that grabs you all that, you know, the module needed for Tesla on Node.js. And if you want to write, you know, write some code to um, take a photo, it's a camera module. You can just get an NPM install camera. I think it's some camera module name, and it's all set. And uh, it's really, the code is super simple. Especially, you know, when you go to Node.js, I don't even have to explain what it's doing. It's really self explanatory right? So basically, uh, you're including a Tesla a module code, and uh, it has events. It's the cam when camera is ready, you take a photo and save. Yeah. So on um, the port, it's um, specified in the first two. So when the first time I try, I just open up the box and just wire, I mean, plug in everything and just write the code. And it's within like whatever minutes I already <laughs> been able to make, to take a selfie. So it's like, yay, I got a selfie. It's a tweet it and then, oh great, I got a seven favorites and three retreats. Why people want retreats? But anyway. <laughs> So later on, I even implemented like a Twitter function. So each time it takes a photo, it automatically tweets. Then I gave everybody in the world to have to see my stupid selfies on like a Twitter feed all the time. It's kind of stupid, so I deleted it later on. But yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying it was that easy and fun. So uh, okay, maybe the shift it to the Raspberry Pi. Do I have time? Yes. And the Raspberry Pi, 
Uh, it's actually quite different from the ones I've been talking about. It's a single board computer that really fits in your palm, like the size of a deck of cards. Well, maybe size wise, it's not much different from the other um, microcontrollers. But the difference is uh, it's really like full figure, like Linux machine here. So, um, yeah. You can just install, so that here's a the SD card slots there. So you can just have a Linux. I actually use a Raspberry and uh, OS, which is uh, um, like a Debian variant. So you can just put this SD card and install it, and it has um, HDMI there. And you can just plug it into uh, your monitor. So this is a um, touch screen actually I got recently. So it doesn't directly connect from HDMI. You have to actually assemble it. But uh, you can have an entire OS in here. It's really inexpensive. So Pi itself is about $30, $35. And this um, screen is like 60 Of course, I have to pay on tax and shipping and stuff. But it's still it's quite inexpensive. And it's running a Raspberry OS here. Even it comes with Mathematica and all kind of cool stuff. Yeah, it's really neat. So it's Again, it comes with a user interface, so it's really easy to use, easy to program for you, because you have the terminals, and, uh, the web browsers, and everything. So the Raspberry Pi Foundation recommends um, Python as a recommended language for the learners. And for kids, um, they have something called Scratch. I don't know if it's a cat or a raccoon. I think it's a cat. And of course, um, also it comes with Java, Ruby, C, and C++. But um, like again, uh, it's a Linux. So that as long as you know it compiles for ARM and chips, uh, you can basically get any languages you want. So uh, when uh, you are playing with hardware, especially in the first time, I mean, even for software, let's say you you are learning like a new JavaScript framework and such. The basic what what the first thing you want to do is uh, writing hello world code to see if it works, right? So for even the hardware, it's the same thing. We have something called the hello world of hardware, which is a uh, turning on LED. It's really great because uh, by doing this in the hello world, you learn how to use breadboard. It's the orange plastic one here. The breadboard. Breadboard has a uh, the metal strips on the back, so. It's really great. You don't have to solder or anything. You can just prototype anything by just using uh, the pins and jump wires. And uh, also, you have to learn like LED, you know, light emitting diode it registers. You see, uh, it's maybe hard to see in a photo, the register and stuff. And as well as you have to refresh your memory of what you've learned in the high school physics class. So this is like a circuit. Uh, that's it's something you might have seen it before, I kind of forget, but it really makes sense. So it's a ball, and the V, the voltage has a, it's a Raspberry Pi supplied 3.3 volts, and the current is going through. It's the I in a convention, but I think in real life, I think the electron goes the other way. And it has a LED with an anode and cathode site, and it has a register. The register is R. So you know you don't want to put too much current going through an LED. You have to suppress some extras, otherwise you burn your LED. So you need registers. So you have to use Ohm's law. <laughs> yeah, it's something like yeah. I really have to restart it because I was like, what? I forgot. So it's basically our uh, register is equal to V divided by. In the real life scenario here, when you're using the red LED, it's like you need to register like 70 ohm. Or maybe just use something like 100 or 200 to be safe. So yeah, you learn things like this. And for the circuit, this is actually uh, actual, well, it's not actual, it's actual diagram of the circuit with uh, Raspberry Pi. Using the breadboard and LED register. So that's how it goes. You have the red and black is just a convention. The black is ground, and red is a power, and the vo voltage goes there. And you have a register in between. It has a little color coded. And many times when uh, your Hello World fails, it's usually because you put a cathode, nanode, the LED the opposite way. Yeah, so I actually uh, have some you know, Raspberry Pi workshop with uh, my colleague, the partner who's over there sometimes. So 
not for this conference, but in some other conference so if you're interested. So anyway, so that's a complete circuit that's supposed to make it look like uh, that circuit over there. So if it works, yes, you see an LED in light zone. But when you want to program this LED, so to do the hello world, especially when you write software too, so you gotta do this programmable, programmable LED. So now move that, the power, the red cable, I mean red wire, to the one of the GPIO pin. So GPIO stands for a general purpose input output. So basically when you're using GPIO pins, you can program your Pi. And that connect to the GPIO pin, so in this case you can program the LED. Then, yes, uh, I told you about there are some languages coming, comes with uh, Raspbian OS, but you can use JavaScript. JavaScript wasn't installed from, you know, when it's shipped, but you can get it, of course. So you can use Node.js with Adreno, Pi, so many other boards. So for the Raspberry Pi, um, you gotta just install Node.js. That's probably the easiest, easiest way. You have to actually run um, upgrade, update and upgrade first, but just get a wget and uh, just use node-arm. There are many people asking me how to install node and people find it's difficult, but no, it's actually not if you know about node-arm. Yep. So, yeah. So when you're using Node.js, there's so many open source modules, right? Yeah, so yeah, why not using those one of those like open source libraries to, you know, deal with IoT and robotics? So um, yeah, um, Johnny Five is really awesome, and it's probably the easiest, you know, library you can use. It's open source. It's format based protocol for the um, IoT. I mean, the uh, IoT and robotics programming, and it, it actually works with Adreno compatible boards. But if you're using uh, IO plugins for more platform supports like for Raspberry Pi. So this was developed by um, Rick Waldron and uh, his team at Boku. And uh, this um, Raspberry Pi I always actually adopted um, by the Brian Hughes. So if you want to use uh, Johnny 5 for Raspberry Pi, you can just get npm install Johnny 5 and also npm install Raspberry IO dash IO. Oops. So yeah, blinking LED with Johnny 5 is super easy. It's really, that's it. So if you're using Adreno, you don't even need a line two actually. So that line two is just requiring Raspberry IO to be able to use on the Raspberry Pi. So it's simple, just in instantiate your board. And when the board is ready, and in this case instantiate your LED, and this number seven is a pin number, you know, GPIO pins I was talking about and just LED that blink. And in this case, it's blinking 500 millisecond on our face. It's that simple. So, yeah, why not? Now, while well, you know the basics, what you can do with your boards, breadboards, and LEDs, and all other stuff, and you know how to write code in JavaScript. So, um, yeah, let's prototype some smart stuff. So this is a photo I took it's not really nice photo because I'm all for photographer. Anyway, it's a photo of um, Philips Hue. I took this photo at the Target, you know, the Target store, right? Which direction is it that? So they have something called Open House right now. So they have really acrylic, just beautiful, and showcase for IoT stuff they sell. So I was just playing around and taking photos, so that's what it is. So basically, what Philips Hue does is uh, you have a mobile phone or tablet and you can just drag it around, and just change the colors of lights, intensity, you know, things like that. So yeah, now yeah, you should be able to create a prototype or something like that. So yeah, many times when talking about like smart stuff, you know, it's connected now about the blue, um, maybe IP address and Bluetooth. But again, I'm talking about Internet of Things here, not a Bluetooth of Things. <laughs> So you want to connect your board, like uh, microcontrollers and the software, and do the con uh, connect in the internet. So um, the so that's where actually the problem is coming. So that's the company I work at. Make sure to visit our booth here too. And uh, office is located really like really right here. It's like a block from here. Anyways, so uh, what Pavana provides is uh, data streaming about devices and anything actually. So you um, you know. 
you don't have to really worry about anything. It just uh, takes care of the whole connections. It scales nicely and everything. And it uh, supports so many different languages, have a bunch of SDKs, like maybe over 70, 75 SDKs. And of course, support JavaScript, both you know, front end, like uh, client JavaScript and Node.js. So you can just use that and publish the data from your browser, a mobile phone. We support iOS and Android as well, so it could be you know, native mobile apps too. So publish your data using the devices. And, and that same data can be subscribed, it's really within a fraction of a second, like a quarter second, to your device, in this case, a Raspberry Pi, which connected to an LED via um, GPIO pins. So that's how it works. And I don't know if you can really see that well, the code samples here, but that's really how easy it is and how you can send in data uh, from browser. So first, uh, you initiate your PubNub. You, once you get signed up, uh, get a subscribe key and publish key here. And on the browser side, you just include uh, one of the CDN, the PubNub code here. Oops. And let's say if we have a button, like a UI button in a browser, and when a button's clicked, on, when on click is fired, it triggers um, LED. So the publish this data, it telling it's triggering the message, a light is true, or it could be anything, any object you want, any JSON or JavaScript you want. But in this case, it's just simple, light true. And once the message is published, and the device subscribe the message automatically. So this is, uh, so first one is a browser, so it's a JavaScript, a client JavaScript. And this one is running on, let's say, um, Raspberry Pi and Node.js. So in a Node, you can um, instantiate these problems in the same manner. I got it required uh, in the module as well. And subscribing this data using, oh, I forgot, this channel should be the same as this here in the remote dash LED, will be the channel now. So it's subscribed automatically. And then once the success callback is called, uh, maybe you can take to the, the Johnny Five blink, so the one we showed there earlier. So you can basically make this IoT, I mean LED IoT fight. Now, yeah, you can turn it on. Well, this is, I didn't add the function to turn it off and stuff, but at least when you press the button, the LED turns on. So of course, yeah, you can create like, yeah, the hue clone, like the one we showed earlier, this. Now you can make maybe poor man's hue here. So I'm using Adreno for this example because it's easier. The reason is Adreno comes with uh, um, analog pins because to use this kind of a common cathode LED comes with a full X, RGB and gram, you need to have a PWM, which is a pulse with modulations. So usually when we're talking about um, pins, digital pins for Raspberry Pi, it's digital means zero or one, right? So it's either off or on, nothing in between. So when you wanna have some in between, in this case we are manipulating the value of RGB, so you don't wanna just on and off, right? It's gonna be either on or I mean off or just white light, that's not what I want. We want some in like a between value so you can do with the software too, but in this case I'm just using analog pins, because it's there. So what it's doing, actually I have a real thing here. Almost forgot to show. So this a tiny little breadboard and Adreno I have. Yeah, you know what, I can run. Okay, so it's just terminal. And sudo, you know, index.js, right? And I have a separated browser. This is on GitHub, so you can basically um, connect from anywhere. I didn't add any um, login function or anything, so basically anyone in the world can, you know, play with my LED right now. So, okay, hold on a second. I don't know if you can see, maybe not, because it's too bright in the background. So now it's ready, it's all the way up. Let's see. Actually, I didn't refresh my browser, so it's kind of weird, but let's see. So each time I send a value, it's just a, you know, a publish. Let's see, I'm gonna just reduce. Can you see? Yeah. So whenever I send some data, just send to, 
Maybe I'm going to reduce red and more green, or maybe I can make it turquoise with more blue. How about that? Anyway, well, maybe I'm going to leave it at the booth later. You can check it out because I don't think you can really see well. So, well, I know it's, it's really not the Philips Hue. I'm offending them, but, uh, but basically I'm just saying you can create some like that. And then you can work on the UI and the browser side. So you know, this is how it works. So we have a software UI with the HTML5 slider, right? So input as a range, yeah. And a slider. And each time it's somebody move. So on, on, when on change event is fired, it just publish the data. And this uh, Adreno board subscribe the same data and reflect in a value. So this is how it, how you do in JavaScript in the browser. So uh, this red input is basically DOM for this slider. And when it's the values change, so on change, on change there, and the publish update, which is some function that basically does um, publish into PubNub. And once this the channel here in the message data, which is an object of color and brightness, it's a value of 0 to 255. Um, once it's subscribed to uh, Adreno, it just reflects to uh, an LED. And so I'm using Johnny5 here, LED.color, so you can just uh, RGB value here. Yeah. So. Uh, Besides some um, light bulbs and stuff, I have this fun little project. Let me see, do I have time? Okay, kind of right now. Kitty cam. <laughs> so this is a Raspberry Pi, a Camilla. Actually, a uh, Raspberry Pi with a Camilla module with a PIR motion sensor. So every time the motion is sensed, so I made it for cats. So once, when my cat is passing by, or it could be me, a human, once the motion is detected, it takes a photo. And once the photo is taken, it goes to an um, image processing. So it detects if cat present has a cat facial detection there. Seriously. So this is a video I created. It's pretty crappy. It's my kitty. All right. Motion detected, did it take a photo, and the photo's taken, yep, cats they are, and it's in doing a browser. So, um, hold on. This kitty cam is um, yeah, written with Node.js as well. So the first, detect, detecting motion. I'm um, using Johnny5 IR, the motion object. Then, when the motion is detected and taking a photo, I'm using Raspberry still. That's a command line tool. But you know, when you're using Node.js, you can actually run the command line at the same time, right? It's pretty neat, so I did. And once the photo is taken, and then now I'm doing another, another thread, I'm doing a cat facial detection. You know, initially I did everything in a single thread. Uh uh, it's a bad idea. It crashed my pie. So it's really, so, and of course, you know, it's tiny little computer, so it's quite limited. So you can't have gigantic photos. I have to really reduce the size of photos. So it's really a lot of trial and error. And I'm using Raspberry Pi too, but somebody actually told me she was using Raspberry Pi, the previous version, and it took her 20 minutes to do the cat facial detection. So I'm like, oh. yeah, for this, I even have to overclock my Pi too. So it's a lot of hacking going on, actually. It wasn't really straightforward than I initially wanted to do. Anyway, and cat facial detection, I'm using a library called KittyDAR. It's serious, it's called KittyDAR, and it's available, it's open source, and it's available on GitHub as well. And I stored a photo, I'm using Cloudinary, it's a cloud stretch. I'm using this because it was just easy, and it has an OJS library too, I mean, the SDK too, so it's easy to use. Then at the same time, I'm um, publishing this data. Data means a URL of where the image is on a PubNub. So I can subscribe this data to a web browser. So the, I was always watching my cat while I was at the work. Uh, okay, hold on, that's not, not the one. Yeah. <laughs> so I can just remove view my cat's photo when I'm at work. It's like, yay, my cat is eating.
<laughs> I know it's silly, but it's fun to work on it, you know. So that's the PRL sensor. It's IR actually, so it's a tiny little plastic dome and that detects the motion. And I don't know, it's probably hard for you to see, but that's uh, how it is goes. So I'm using a Johnny 5. I didn't include like the require Johnny 5 and stuff, but have to. So when a board is ready, uh, an instantiated motion is in a 5 motion, and 7 is a, a GPIO pin, and it has a calculation, and the ones that, and once the motion is detected, it's some, you know, it's really something's moving around nearby this um, the sensor, and motion start events is triggered here. So once motion starts events, it's fired, I just um, I'm running this uh, Raspberry still using the child process and spawn. That's the way you, you know, the run the command line tool from Node.js so they take a photo. And the processing photo, like again, I'm using another thread, so I have another child process, but it's a fork, using a fork this time. And it takes into another JavaScript file. And that actually includes KittyDAR. So I'm doing uh, cat facial detection while uh, camera is still taking, I mean, the motion sensor is still working and camera is still working in the separated thread. So I'm doing this. And when cat is detected, I'm um, sending back here. Uh, or message here. So it's basically the same thing as a kind of like a web worker, right? So the message is returned. And when uh, it returns with a base 64 strings here. So once we got a base 64 string, I can send this data to cloud storage, right? So that's basically how it works. Yeah, yeah, I can talk about this like all day long. It's a fun project. But uh, my source code is available on GitHub. And it was really one of my most popular repo, actually. It got like more than 300 stars. And, uh, oh, the bugs. And it was cool. I made it into a top page of Hacker News. Again, this was not the first time. It's the last time. I don't know. I think I made it at least twice. And last time was a cat related project as well. It's always about cats. So, yeah, I got some. Um, <laughs> interest from a bunch of people. So I was even invited to be on a TV show. It's that's the new screensaver show by Leo Lepart. That was fun. So I actually really live demo this cat camera on live TV. I can't believe I did this because live demo usually fails, but I really demo with a real cat. And it worked. That was awesome. And Leo even had me to you know test with dog too. And of course it did not work with dog as expected. So everything was Fine. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, that was a fun project, and I wish I could, you know, demo here. But I did not want to bring my cat here. He's gonna freak out anyway. So I didn't bring it. So yet again, I say I don't have any formal like uh, background in electrical engineering. I'm a software person. I'm a web developer, but I hack the hardware, so you can do too. So maybe you can join some local uh, meetups and stuff. This was actually a photo taken at the Notebots Day and a few months ago. And that was a popping up office. And uh, yeah, so we also have a few, three meetups this week. So the popping up is located in Folsom at third. It's really, it's a block away, only one block from here. And tomorrow we have a San Francisco JavaScript meetup. And it's about Node.js too. And a Wednesday has a happy hour. I don't think it has any uh, session of speaking. It's just a happy hour with uh, bought some beer. And the Thursday, we're going to know about SF and Halloween hacks. That's a fun stuff. So, yeah, uh, that's all. And thank you so much. And my information's here. Then again, I'll be in a booth for this afternoon. So, and just come say hi. And if you have questions, yeah, you can just come grab me. All right, thank you.